Greetings, my brother. I want to thank God that we are alive and that we are able to give him praise and to talk about him. I want to just give God thanks for the privilege of being encouraged by you and then for the privilege of encouraging you. I want to thank God for my brothers and sisters in the Lord. You know that one of these days that we are going to be together in this place that he's gone to prepare for us. And I want to thank God for you and how you are endeavoring to live your life to bring honor and glory to God. The truth of the matter, we are here to encourage one another. And time after time, we can find things that are said, done, great discouragement. So we are to be here to help one another find our way back to where we were before we were discouraged. This matter of discouragement, as I've said, it happens to all of us. None of us are above it. The only thing is that some stay discouraged longer than others. Now, the songwriter in the song entitled The Banner of the Cross, speaking of spiritual warfare, he said, over land and sea, wherever man may dwell, make the glorious tidings known. Of the crimson banner, now the story tell, while the Lord shall claim his own. Marching on, marching on. For Christ count everything but loss, and to crown him king, toil and sing, meet the banner of the cross. Reasons for discouragement. I shared with you in our last devotion that this man, Ahab, who was king of Samaria, he reigned for 22 years over Israel in Samaria. And there, all the kings that were before him, he beat them all when it comes to wickedness. He was the wickedest king Israel ever had. He married a woman that encouraged his wickedness. He served other gods and not the almighty God. And today we're gonna look at the prophet Elijah who just could not stand what is going on. So he, in the power of God, he stand to take on Ahab. One of the things that one must understand when one stands up for right, that means that the one who is out there seeking to do the wrong, the one who is over the wrong that is done, gets upset, even though he's your enemy, even though he is my enemy, man, he just steps up the wrath against us when we stand up against him. So here it is, Elijah stands up to let people know this is wrong, serving this common G.O.D. when the almighty G.O.D., the one who created us, is the one that we need to serve. Now this man, Elijah, his name means the Lord is God. So his very name tells us something. Elijah was about to prove to all that the Lord is God and not be a common Jew that the leader of Israel was leading the people. He told Ahab that hope coming. He said to Ahab that it will last for years. Now, if you notice carefully, how God directed him to speak. In chapter 17 of 1 Kings, and verse number 2 down to verse number 7, the Bible said, And the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, It is amazing that one can hear the word of God. And that's something that we all must do and live in our lives. We must hear the word of God. He said, Get thee hence, and turn thee eastward, and hide thyself by the brook cherub, that is before Jordan. And it shall be that thou shalt drink of the brook, and I have commanded the ravens to feed thee there. So he went and did according unto the word of the Lord, for he went and dwelt by the brook Cherith, that is before Jordan. And the ravens brought him bread and flesh in the morning, bread and flesh in the evening, and he drank of the brook. And it came to pass after a while that the brook cried. Because they go. We notice here carefully that God said to them, Go and 
hide or something. If you read from verse 8 down to verse number 24, you would see God telling him, or oh, dwell at Zarephath. Sometimes when God speaks and he sends you a place, sometimes it is not the place that you would like to go. And in the one of us going somewhere, we would like to know that everything is in order for us before we get there. We want to make sure that everything is cleared before we get there. And when we get there, we want to make sure that everything is in order. Everything is set up. We just want to know. But in this case, this man of God did not know. All he had to do is to follow the Lord. He sent him to go hide himself. He says, go down and dwell at Zarephath. First he said to him, I want you to go and dwell by the brook. Then after the brook was dried up, he said, go hide at Zarephath. Now at the brook, God had already prepared the ravens to feed the man of God. God has a way of doing things that we just don't understand. But the end result is always the best. If we could see the end before we start, I guess we probably will do it even with more energy if we could see the end. But we cannot see the end. But what we do need to do is to trust God. Because as far as God is concerned, it is already lived out. This is just a replay in the mind of God. God knows everything. When he sends you somewhere, he knows exactly why he's sending you there, for what purpose, and what would be accomplished when you get there. So he said to him, go dwell at Zarephath. When you come to chapter 18, verse number 1, the Bible said, I became the best after many days that the word of the Lord came to Elijah in the third year saying, go show thyself on the air. He, he told him, go hide yourself from the air. And the truth of the matter is, Ahab is seeking to destroy him because Ahab is against this God that Elijah is now portraying to the people. And Elijah is against this God that Ahab got the people worshiping. So now God tells Elijah, go show yourself on the Ahab. Elijah's running away from Ahab. This is something that Elijah really don't want to do. When Elijah went to show himself, Samaria was in a state for the lack of rain. If you look at verse 2, down to about verse number 6, and Elijah went to show himself unto Ahab, and there was a sore famine in the land. Because of the lack of rain, the place was dry, man. It was a problem in the land. And Ahab called Obadiah, which was the governor of the house. Now Obadiah feared the Lord greatly. And it was so when Jezebel cut off the prophets of the Lord that Obadiah took an hundred prophets and hid them by fifties in a cave and fed them with bread and water. And Ahab said unto Obadiah, Go into the land, unto all fountains of water, and unto all brooks for adventure. Ye may find grass to save the horses and the mules alive, that we lose not all the beasts. There was a real famine there, and now they are looking for food to feed the animals. Go find where we can carry the horses and the mules that they can find something to eat. Now, God told Elijah to go show himself. If we read from verse number 7 to verse number 16, we would see that Obadiah, in his search for food for the animals, ran into Elijah. He met Elijah. And time will not permit me to share that with you today. But next day, I'll pick up from right here. Lord, thank you so much. We don't understand it all. But God, we can trust you in it all. And Lord, just like 
You have shown us what you did through this man, your servant. God, we know that you can do things through us that will honor you and glorify you. So may you have your way in our lives as we go to serve you today. We love you, praise you, thank you, and glorify you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. May God bless you and do have a wonderful day in the Lord. As you click that button, please share with a friend and a loved one. Have a great day.